Hey everybody, this is Daniel from fitnessblender.com and today I'm going to be taking you through a lower body specific routine. Now this one is designed to not use any equipment whatsoever, however if you want to make it a little bit more difficult you can always add in uh, some dumbbells or weighted vests, so some kind of extra weight to make it that much more hard. So what we're going to be doing is we have 10 different exercises to go through and we're going to be going through each one of them for one minute straight without any break. Then you get a 15 second break to move on to the next exercise. We're just going to run down the list one time through and then we're going to go through and do our cool down. So we're going to start off with a little bit of warm up, end off a little bit of a cool down. Now if you want to do this more than once, then just skip the cool down at the end and start right back into the routine again. Uh, you can either do this just one time through and add in a few other body groups with your workout today, or you can do uh, two or three rounds of this to make it that much more difficult to really get those legs nice and tired. So with that said, go ahead and pause it here if you want to go and collect some weights to do the routine with. Otherwise, we're going to start into that warm up. So I'm going to go ahead and start my timer here. We're going to focus on that core, so keep those hips uh, locked out nice and straight with that torso. It's a nice slow motion down, around to the side. Pause at the bottom, and then reverse that direction back around, trying to open those hips up just a little bit. It's a nice slow fluid motion. We're going to switch this in just a second. Last one back around. And go and stand back up, lock those hips into those legs this time. So just bending from that torso, so round over. Same exact thing, but keeping those hips straight up and down. Pause at the center, back around the opposite direction. Nice, slow, fluid motion. Try to get as much range of motion as you can. Nice, slow, controlled uh, range of motion so you don't overextend too much, especially since those muscles are still cold. It's nice, slow, fluid motion. I'm going to say that like five or six more times, apparently. And let that relax. We're going to go nice and slow to the side. Just let that hip drop down. Back over the other side, let the other hip drop down. Should feel a little bit of stretch on the inside of that thigh. Working those legs just a little bit, just nice and slow back and forth. Keep those lungs open, try and get a little bit more range of motion every single time. And go ahead and let that one relax. We're going to go into a leg kick, so keeping that torso straight up and down. Start with it nice and low, and then slowly start bringing it higher and higher as that leg feels more and more limber. Kind of reaching across with that opposite hand from foot. Nice slow motion. Remember, this isn't a real ha uh, fast, heavy kick. This is just kind of a nice light swing. Make sure you have that leg under control. You can feel like you could stop that leg at any point. And go ahead and switch sides. Same thing on the other leg. Remember, start relatively small and start building that range of motion up more and more as you increase that flexibility. Keep those lungs open. Again, keep that torso straight up and down. You're just focusing on swinging that leg. Keep it under control. And let that relax. We're going to do a nice hip raise again, but this time is with that knee bent. So that knee bent comes up, out to the side, touch it, bring it back around, and drop. Same thing on the other side, up and out. And back around, since we're doing both sides, we're going to do it double time. Nice and slow. Try to really focus on getting that knee up really nice and high. You should feel that kind of in the front of your hip. Just slowly moving back and forth. Halfway through. Again, keep that torso straight up and down. Keep those lungs open. Don't hold your breath. Slow, controlled motion. We're going to something a little bit faster next. So get those feet moving. You should do a nice little quick jog in place. A nice small range of motion at first. Just stay up on the ball of that foot. Just kind of shuffling those feet back and forth. We're going to start making that motion just a little bit bigger. Going into a little bit of a high knee motion. So actually lifting that foot all the way up off the ground. This is going to be our last one. 
So our next one's gonna jump into our regular routine. So keep those feet moving just a little bit longer. And let her relax. All right, if you want to use weight, then go and grab that weight. We're gonna be starting into just a traditional squat for our first exercise. Let's go ahead and grab weight if you want that. Otherwise, it's just gonna be body weight. We're gonna go ahead and start it up right now. So just a traditional squat, back perfectly flat, just like if you're using weight, even if you're not. Feet just about shoulder width apart. All right, start up, nice low squat, and slowly back up. If you need to limit that range of motion, that's perfectly fine, but try to get as much range of motion out of this as you possibly can. So down nice and low, just make sure that back stays flat. So if you start going low enough, you feel the lower back rounding, you're going too low, we'll limit that range just a little bit more. So nice full range of motion. Again, lungs open. Just keep that motion going. Again, we're doing one minute straight through on each one of these exercises. So we're a little over halfway right now on this one. The slower you go, the more you focus on staying down nice and low, taking your time at the bottom of that range of motion, the more work those legs are gonna have to do. Spend as little time with those legs locked out as possible. So if anything, keep them just a little bit soft the entire time. 10 seconds left. Five, four, three, two, one, and let it relax. You got 15 second break, so let those legs shake out for a second. If you wanna get set up for that next exercise, and we're doing a lateral jump next. So you don't wanna use weight for this one unless you have something like a weighted vest. You don't wanna be carrying weight for this one. All right, let's go ahead and get started. Just jumping left to right. Easier version is letting that foot touch down behind you. Harder version, you're going to actually start keeping that foot up. Nice wide jump. Start pushing that jump as wide as you possibly can, trying to get further and further each time. A little over halfway. Keep those lungs open. As much as you can, try to push that range of motion, jumping as wide as possible. 10 seconds left. Probably gonna be feeling it to the outside of that butt muscle. And let it relax. Should feel it to the quads and into those glutes quite a bit. Especially with the next one, it's gonna be a ski squat. So again, just a traditional squat, but this time with those feet really nice and close together. Same rules apply, flat back. All right, start up nice and low down. And right back up again, almost to a full extension. And then down again. Again, if you wanna use weight for these, feel free to grab some dumbbells. This one is really easy to use dumbbells for, just by your sides. Let them drop straight down. Just again, be sure you keep that back perfectly flat. And it's halfway right there. Try to evenly disperse your weight between your heel and the ball of your foot. If you let those knees go over those toes, that's fine. What you're trying to do is mimic the angle of your chest with the angle of your shin. So if that's the same, you're right where you need to be. We're almost done. Three, two, one, and let it relax. Again, let those legs kind of shake out a little bit. We got another one coming up, which is going to be a traditional lunge. We're doing an alternating lunge, so out with the left leg, back up straight, out with the right leg, back up straight. All right, again, if you want to use weight for this, go for it. So step it out, back up, step it out, and back up. So if you don't have a whole lot of strength yet, then keep that range of motion pretty limited, a nice shallow lunge, not a very deep step. However, if your legs are really nice and strong, then take a really nice deep step, get out there as far as you can. You're gonna have to actually kind of bounce to, to push yourself back up, or not really bounce, but get a nice quick shove to get yourself back up. Just keep that motion going. 
Torso straight up and down. Keep those lungs open. Try to get as long of a step as you can control. Try to make sure your weight is even between your front and your rear leg. Your momentum is gonna to wanna to carry you forward onto that front leg. So you're gonna have a tendency to really lean forward. Try to keep back on that back leg as well. And that's the last one right there. Go ahead and let that one relax. All right, our next one is gonna be a sumo squat. So this one is with those feet really nice and wide apart. Again, traditional squat rules apply. Nice flat back. Okay, again, if you wanna use weight for this one, it's best to do it over your shoulders. And start up, feet really nice and wide. Down as low as you can control, as low as those hips will allow. A lot of people will have issues with the range of motion in their hip on this one. The wider those feet go, the more your feet, your uh, hip joint is already extended. So it's gonna feel like you have a really limited range of motion. But keep those feet kind of turned out just a little bit. Keep pushing as full range of motion as you can. When you come up to the top, Keep those knees slightly bent. Don't lock out and hold. Just keep it going. We're over halfway. Again, nice flat back. Don't really have to worry about knee over toe for this one because you're feeding me out so wide. I'll never get there. Just five more seconds. Three, two, one, and let it relax. All right. Another 15 second break. We have a straight leg deadlift coming up next. So this one, just body weight, is a little bit hard to get a really good pull on those hamstrings. So if you need to, grab some weight, just do them uh, dumbbells right in front of your chest. All right, start them up. Nice flat back, knees very slightly bent. You just can go straight forward as perpendicular or as parallel to the ground as you possibly can. And then back up perpendicular. So nice and slow down. As far as you can stretch those hamstrings. If you've got really, really tight hamstrings, then it's always a good idea to get a little extra range of motion. So just switch into a regular deadlift, which is going to be more like this, and back up. A nice big knee bend. But preferably stretch those hamstrings at the same time as working them. To make it a little bit harder with just body weight, hands back behind your head, or a full extension above your head. Leverage changes just a little bit, makes it just a little bit harder. Just 10 seconds left, keep those lungs open, back flat. Five, four, three, two, and let it relax. All right, another 15 second break. We're moving on to a tiptoe squat next. So this one is gonna be back in a traditional stance, so feet just about hip to shoulder width apart, maybe just a little bit wider up on those tiptoes. So up on top of your tippy toes the entire time, squat down as low as you can, right back up, don't let that heel touch. So this one's gonna shove those knees really, really far forward, don't worry about it, just keep that back flat. You might not wanna do this one with weight, uh, especially because it's a lot harder for overall balance. So body weight is always a good one for this one. Air on the side of caution. Keep that motion going, those calves are gonna start burning like crazy. You should still feel it in those quadriceps, the front of that thigh, even in those butt muscles quite a bit as well. Just keep it going. Over halfway done. Again, keep those heels up off the ground. Try to keep that shin and that chest to the same angle. Almost there, just 10 seconds left. Four, three, two, one, and let it relax. All right, you got 15 seconds for the next one. We're gonna be doing just regular calf raises next. We're doing it with both feet, so I definitely suggest using some extra weight for this one if you have something handy, even if you're just holding a jug of water next to you. So just standing flat-footed, if you have a step, then use that. You're just gonna push up onto the, those toes as high as you can, drop back down, a little bit of a space behind those heels or underneath those heels, and right back up. Just very, very slow range of motion. If you need a little extra help for balance and put a chair in front of you or lean against a wall. Otherwise, try to balance without touching anything. It'll actually make that ankle complex have to work a whole lot harder and actually help overall balance in everyday life activities as well. So just keep it going. A little over halfway. 
Like I said, if you're using just body weight, you're hardly going to feel anything in those calves at all with this one. They're going to start burning a little bit by the end, but not much. So if you have some dumbbells handy or just some other kind of extra weight, I'd definitely suggest using it for this one. Almost done, just five seconds left. And let it relax. All right, shake those legs out. Those calves relax for a second. We're moving on to our next one, which is going to be a plie squat. So this one, feet again, just about shoulder width apart, but try to get those hips open as much as you can, pointing those toes in opposite directions as much as possible. So plie is just here. Grand plie, if anybody knows, ballet is nice and low. So again, trying to keep those toes pointed in opposite directions is another one. It's gonna be hard on overall balance. So move slowly. Move deliberately, and it'll help you keep that balance. If you try to move too quickly, then it's going to start throwing you off balance. So just take your time. Again, go as low as you can, as low as you can control. A lot of this is also going to be how much flexibility you have through that groin muscle, through that hamstring again. But just nice and slow. Constantly be pushing it, trying to get a little extra stretch out of it while you're doing this. So nice, slow motion. Back perfectly flat. Because those uh, legs are kicking off sideways, you can pretty much keep that uh, chest straight up and down. You don't even have to lean forward at all. Almost done, under 10 seconds. Three, two, one, and let it relax. All right, we have one more to go. This is a single leg bridge where you're doing this one flat down on the ground. So you're gonna lay down on your back. We're going to do half and half, so starting with one leg up, hands out on the ground for balance, shoot those hips up in the air, a little bit of a hover, and right back up. If you need to, just do both feet at the same time on the ground, otherwise to make it a little bit harder, one leg at a time. Like I said, I'll try to switch you halfway. Nice tight squeeze, weight in your heel, try not to push onto your toe, Got 10 seconds till we switch. Four, three, two, one. Switch legs. Go right into the other side. Let's keep it going. Tight, tight squeeze. Get those hips up in there as high as you can. Ten seconds left to go. Five. Four, three, two, one, and let it relax. All right, that was the end of the leg routine. Again, if you want to do that round all over again, go ahead and just jump right back into the uh, regular routine and skip the uh, cool down until you've finished all of the rounds you want to do. Otherwise, we're going to a little bit of cool down now. Let me switch my timer again here. So, we're going to be doing about 30 seconds for each stretch, focusing on those muscles that we use. So we're going to start off with that hamstring first, one leg tucked in, the other one out nice and straight. Reach down towards that toe, open that chest, hand over top, just stretch it down as far as you can, get a really good stretch on that torso, as well as through that hamstring. Just keep those lungs open. A few more seconds. And switch sides, same thing on the other side, tuck that other leg in, reach for that toe, if you can't touch it that's fine, just get down there as low as you can, other hand over top, reach it down as well, keep that chest open out to the side. Just try to relax as much as you can, five more seconds. And let it relax, bring those feet in together, really nice and close. Pull them in as much as you can, back nice and flat. Use the muscles to the outside of your thighs to pull those legs down towards the ground. Nice flat back. Should feel that groin muscle just like you are feeling for those plie squats. Try to bring that heart rate down nice and slow. And scoot those feet up just a little bit further in front of you. Get that back nice and flat and lean straight forward. Should feel it down inside that hip socket. 
So just lean as far as is comfortable. You don't have to really, really push it on this one. Five seconds left. And let that relax. We're gonna do some regular toe touch. So his feet together nice and close. Just reach down towards those toes. Hands on those shins is just fine. Just reach down, try to tuck that chin to your chest, and round those shoulders over. You should feel it jump into your back a lot more as well as that hamstring. You might also feel it to the back of that knee and a little bit into that calf as well. Everybody feels it just a little bit differently. Just hold it there. And let that one relax. Go ahead and lay back onto your back. Cross one leg over top, grab behind that thigh and pull it in. Make sure you don't grab in front of that shin. You wanna grab behind that thigh. That way you're not over compressing or putting too much stress on that knee. So just pull it in. You're gonna feel it in the opposite leg, the glute and hip joint of that opposite leg. Just a little bit longer, about five more seconds. And let it relax, go and switch sides. That opposite leg goes over, same exact thing. Pull that leg in, grab it behind that thigh. So let the rest of your body relax. Like I said, you're gonna be feeling it in that leg that's crossed over top. So you're gonna feel it in that uh, butt muscle, that glute muscle, down inside that hip. About 10 seconds left. And let that relax. We're going to flip you over onto your stomach. Stress that back just a little bit. Up into that cobra. Just go up as high as you can. If you can't lock out those elbows, that's fine. Just as high as you can, as high as it's comfortable. Just hold it. Sit back in those heels, hands stretch out away from you. Halfway through, just keep those lungs open. Round that back as much as you can. got one more to do. We're just going to stand back up one more time. So regular toe touch. So feet just about hip width apart. Stretch straight down towards those legs. Keep that back flat. Keep those legs locked out. Down as far as you can. Hold it for just a little bit longer. A little extra on this one. All right, good job. That is the end of our cool down, which means this workout is complete. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.